Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and in this video I will show you how to create a bootable USB drive that will allow you to install a Linux distribution. In this case it's going to be Ubuntu 2004. So the first step is to actually download the Ubuntu 2004 ISO. So what we need to do is navigate to ubuntu.com, click on the home page and then go to the download tab at the top, go to Ubuntu desktop and 2004 LTS and that will be in the process of downloading the ISO. So now that the ISO is downloaded, we can actually use a piece of software to burn the ISO to a USB drive. Now my particular recommendation is Belena Etcher, and the reason I'm recommending this is because it's cross-platform, so it doesn't matter whether you're on Windows, OS X or Linux, it will allow you to install it and use it. I'll also add that the Linux download is actually packaged in, in a app image, so what this means is that in theory it will work on any distribution out there regardless of the package manager being used. Uh, as it turns out I can actually install this from the repository which is how I'm going to do it. So step three is to use Belena Etcher to flash the ISO. Now the interface of the application is very straightforward. You've got four options. You've got flash from file, flash from URL, selecting your drive and then flash to begin the process. So flash from file is obviously going to re reference the ISO we just downloaded. So in this case, the 2004 Ubuntu desktop ISO. So add that. And then the, the drive is obviously the flash drive we're going to be using. Now to install Ubuntu 2004, you will need a flash drive that has a capacity of at least 4 gig. In my case, I've got an 8 gig one, so that's absolutely fine. So we've selected that, and then we click the flash button, type in our password. And now the process will begin. It usually takes a couple of minutes, but uh, obviously it depends on the flash drive and your system itself. And uh, what you'll find is at the end of the process, you'll get a notification to tell you that the burn was successful. As you can see, the process has now actually finished burning, so it's going to just run through and validate it. And at the end of this, you'll get a message at the top saying successfully burned. Okay, so the process is now complete, so we can actually move on to boot off the drive, the flash drive itself. So step four is to install Ubuntu 2004 from the USB drive. Now, one thing you'll probably notice that when you restart your computer, it, you'll typically see a prompt that says press F12 or F8 to open the boot menu, but this may of course vary depending on your system. So what you need to do is press that key when it arrives, and you'll typically see two options. The first option will say something along the lines of Ubuntu 2004 and the second option will say Ubuntu USB. Now each of these does correspond to UEFI or legacy BIOS. Now my recommendation nowadays is that use UEFI unless you have a very old computer that does not support it. But we're like talking computers that are at least a decade old. So once we've booted that we simply can run through the installation wizard of Ubuntu 2004. Okay, so the wizard is now booted up, so we want to be choosing the option to install Ubuntu. So we'll just give it a second or so to run through that. So the first thing you select is your keyboard layout. I'm British, so I'm going to choose English UK. Now you have an option here of choosing either a normal or minimum installation. The only difference is it just dictates what software is installed at the end of this particular process. I'd also recommend choosing download updates when installing Ubuntu as well as install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. Kind of required if you've got maybe a wireless card that doesn't typically come with a driver that's built in to uh, Linux by default and also helps with playing back things like MP MP3, MP4 and a lot of audio and, vid and video formats as well. So yeah, my recommendation is go, go with normal and tick both of these options here. Okay, let's continue. One other thing to note as well is that if you did choose the normal one, you can just you know you can just remove the software that you don't want in the end anyway, so it makes no real difference. Now normally you'll have two options here. You'll have erase disk and install Ubuntu, or you'll have something else. The erase disk, I would recommend using the erase disk and install install Ubuntu as it will set up all your partitions and you won't have to do anything like that. Something else basically means you do it all manually. 
So let's choose a RIS disk and install Ubuntu. Click on the install now. And this just summarizes what's going to happen. So you're going to create two partitions. Click continue. Now you choose our locale. Now if you've got your actually connected to the internet at this point, it'll do automatically. If not, this is where you'd specify it. So click continue. And now from here, we're going to set up our user account. So I'm going to go with Ryan Johnson, because that's my name. And we'll call this one Ubuntu-PC. Username is always lowercase and password. I'm definitely not going to put password123. You can also choose the option here to log in automatically if you don't want to type the password in. But I always like to have require my password to log in. Click continue. And now it will bring, begin the process of installing. It shouldn't take too long at all. But again, your mileage may vary. Okay, so the installation process is now complete. So let's click to restart now. And about, about 30 seconds or so, you should get a prompt to remove the USB flash drive. In fact, there it is. And then press enter. So let's do that. Okay, so let's now type our password and sign into our brand new system. So now we just need to run through the initial setup wizard. So we we'll skip that, go to next, 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 and then finally done. And that's it. All installed and also the end of this particular video. So as always, thank you very much for watching this video. And if you did find it handy or helpful in any way, please don't forget to leave it a like and also subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.